In this video, we're gonna be setting up and configuring i3. So as always, you can find all of the commands that I run in this video over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you install i3. Uh, we're gonna be using i3 gaps, i3 status, i3 lock, and d menu for running our programs. Uh, we're gonna need a terminal emulator. We're gonna be using Alacrity. Uh, some X utilities, so this is X set. Uh, X set is gonna kind of speed up your keys. And Zorg X render is going to, if your display is all messed up right now, you'll be able to use X render to fix that. Um, now auto tiling, if you have Yay, and I have a video on installing Yay for Arch Linux, then you can just install auto tiling this way. Um, if you're on Ubuntu, you'll need to download the Python file and just make sure it's somewhere executable for the config to find. And I'll show you where we do auto tiling in the config. All right, so make sure you put this stuff in your .x profile. So all this is gonna do is make sure that your screen doesn't go blank um, really fast all the time. And then what this is gonna do is it's gonna speed up the key repeat. So it's kind of painful for me to work in terminals all the time with slow keys. So I just think this is pretty helpful. All right, so I also recommend to get started pulling down um, my config. So by the way, I already installed everything, so you can install all of this and pause the video and then catch back up here. So you can use this to clone down my dot files and make sure that you have git installed. Uh, and you can install git with, uh, you know, sudo apt install git or pacman flag s git. All right, and so now we have my dot files in your home directory. So if we do pwd, um, we can see that. Now if you cd into the dot files, you'll see that nothing's there. So if you ls-a, you'll see that these are dot files because they are all hidden files, right? So we're gonna need stuff in this config file. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to move our old, and if you didn't know, so we're gonna cd, if you just cd, then you cd home, right? I'm gonna press Control L, and to make things a little obvious, I'll enable this, all right? So if you didn't know, you have this directory called .config in your home directory, and we can ls inside here, and this is all of the config for all of the programs that we have installed. One of the programs that we have installed is i3. So we'll cd into there, and then here we go. This is the config. So what this command is gonna do is it's gonna move that config to config.old. And I guess this keeps saying this because this might just be a feature of this terminal maybe, but we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna move the config from my dot files over. All right. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is make a directory for Alacrity for, that's con for that thing's config. All right, and that's what that command will do. So now we have one called Alacrity, and again, we are in home user.config. Now the next thing that we'll do is move my configuration over. All right, so before we start it, what you're gonna wanna do is go in there, right? Uh, open up alacrity.yaml. All right, so maybe you didn't see me do that, so let me go back to the top here. So ls, where am I? I am in .config alacrity. So inside there is an alacrity.yaml, so alacrity.yaml. And you're gonna to wanna to get rid of these fonts here since you don't have these fonts. So we're just gonna go down and delete all of those. Um, and you can use any text editor you want, you don't have to use Vim. All right, so now that that's in there and the alacrity stuff's done, what you're gonna to wanna to do is press uh, super shift R and that will have loaded my i3. So another thing you'll notice now is that you don't have a status anymore. You don't have a status bar, and we're gonna fix that right now. So let's go back, let's go into i3, and let's open up our new i3 config. Now one of these you're not gonna care about, and I'll make this big with super f. So one of these you're not gonna care about, and that's going to be um, this polybar launch. So you can get rid of polybar launch, and instead of polybar launch being in there, what you can do is add back in the original status bar. And instead of it being at the bottom, we're gonna move it to the top. So we're gonna go over here, and I guess we'll just, for now, we'll just put it right here. So it says, I don't know why everything's unsafe to this terminal emulator. All right, so we'll save that, 
And now to reload in my config, what I have is uh, F1. So you'll want to do super F1. All right. And now we have, and you probably barely see it in the video, but we have our, um, you know, our status line back at the top. All right. So that's pretty much all you'll have to do for that to kind of get the basics going. Now, what we can do is if you press super enter, you're going to open up Alacrity instead of a different terminal emulator. So let's talk about some of this config and kind of how that's happening. Um, and also some of the commands. So basically I just said here, all you have to do is open up the config file to see all of the commands. So let's go do that. All right, so config, and then we'll go inside of I3. And again, where am I? I'll do PWD, that's where I am, and I'm gonna just open up config. All right, so and there's not a lot of good syntax highlighting for this right now, but let's see. So what do some of these things do? So mod plus return, and mod is your super key, right? And we know that because up here we have that set as mod four, so mod four is the super key. What we're gonna do is we're gonna execute a terminal, all right? And if you do mod shift that, then you'll execute a terminal in the same exact directory. Um, escape will swap to your greeter, so if you know what a greeter is, that's just our DM or our login screen. Uh, mod shift escape will hibernate. And I guess there's a few other important ones here, like uh, super D. If you press super D, and you can probably barely see it, but D menu shows up there at the top. Um, there's a few other things that I have in here for programs you may not have installed, things like um, like Ytop and Flameshot. So feel free to go through this config and look for programs that are not installed and just install them and kind of see what they do. Or if you'd rather use something different than Flameshot to uh, take screenshots or something like that, you can swap that out here. So what you'll do is you can see exec, no startup ID, then just swap it whatever the, with whatever the command is that you want to um, do instead of this one. And that's pretty much for all these. So for every single one, I have a character over top, so this is Y, and then what mod Y and like what mod shift Y would do. All right, so I think um, that's pretty much it for this. I did want to go into the auto tiling though. So what auto tiling gets us is this right here. If you notice, it starts to open them up um, kind of like, all right, it'll go like a vertical split, then a horizontal split, then a vertical split, then a horizontal split. And that's a lot better than just going straight across tons of vertical splits, I think. So that's what the auto tiling is getting us. All right, so if you want to extend I3, or if you want to like write special you know, scripts that you can um, like execute, and you're kind of advanced, you might want to look into the I3 IPC library. Um, and some people will, will probably ask me or ask you or ask whoever, you know, why use i3wm instead of, you know, insert my favorite window manager here. Uh, some of the reasons that I use i3 are just because it's literally the first one that I ever used, like when I heard of tiling window managers. So that's why I use it. Um, it also has a really big community and a ton of documentation. So that's another reason that I really like it. Um, but there's nothing wrong with a lot of the other ones. It just depends like kind of the level of work that you want to put in and uh, what you're comfortable with, right? So i3, you don't use a programming language to configure it. You use this text file over here, right? Um, if you want to use something like DWM, honestly, you don't have to write much C, but you, you would probably have to write a little bit of C to work with DWM. And it has a patch system instead of some of the stuff that we're doing here. Uh, also, I think you have to recompile it. Uh, Xmonad is basically DWM, but if you're, if you're familiar with Haskell, you might want to use Xmonad. I don't know what BSPWM, uh, what they do for the config, but I know that that one's very popular. Uh, SpectreWM is pretty uh, obscure, but it's like one that's out there if you want to check that out. And then Awesome, if you're familiar with Lua, you might want to check out Awesome. Uh, I left some links here at the bottom to um, the ArchWiki and some extras for i3 if you want to check those out. So the ArchWiki is just going to tell you more stuff about i3. All right. So if you want to find more of my configs, uh, you can always just, you know, clone down my dot .files and look through them, but you can also check them out over on my GitHub. So you'll go in here. You can look at some of the binaries that I have here. I don't really have many. Um, and then... 
like this Pac-Man list is all of the packages that I have installed on my system. And then in the .config is like literally the config for every single um, thing that I really use, right? So like that Alacrity config is right here. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you like the content, uh, consider supporting me over on Patreon. I think that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.